He shaped lives, fostering confidence, instilling values, and creating an environment where his athletes were encouraged to not only be great wrestlers, but also be great individuals. His legacy is so much more than wins and losses. It's about leaving the sport better than the way he found it. Jim also served on the National Wrestling Coaches Association board for six years, serving two years as president and two years as president-elect. But Jim's talents extended far beyond the wrestling room. When he wasn't busy teaching leg sweeps or dealing with referees who apparently missed their annual eye exams, <laughs> sorry referees, he found time to move to North Carolina and work for Roger Penske. Yes, that's a NASCAR guy. Now, how Jim transitioned from wrestling masks to racetracks is a mystery that may never fully be solved. Whether it's steering a wrestler's career or steering a race team to victory, Jim has a knack for getting people to go full throttle. At Penske, Jim applied the same principles that made him a Hall of Fame coach, discipline, hard work, and keeping cool under pressure. Whether it's in the middle of a wrestling match or in the heat of a pit stop, the man knows how to perform at, with high stakes. While at Penske, his crews helped when 485-hundreds, two Daytona 500s, was a 10-time pit crew champion, three NASCAR and five IndyCar championships, all under the leadership of a guy who still doesn't know how to change his own oil. <laughs> His induction tonight into the National Wrestling Hall of Fame is just a testament to his success as an athlete and as a coach, but also to his contributions to the wrestling community. Jim, tonight we honor you for your incredible achievements, your decades of service, and the profound impact you've had on the sport of wrestling and beyond. You've inspired countless athletes, coaches, and fans, and your legacy will continue to inspire many more. Let us now welcome Jim Beekner. So many great friends and coaches. I love them today. 
Period two, coaches, athletes, and difference makers uh, for me in the wrestling, in my wrestling life. High school coach Cliff Blum was here tonight, and uh, Bob Blum, uh, two greatest coaches I could ever have. To me, they were like wrestling for Dan Gable or John Smith or Keanu Sanders, and all the great, all the great ones. They were incredible leaders, coaches, and friends, and I was very lucky to have them. I'm so grateful that the both of you could make it today. Can't tell you how much I appreciate you. And thank you for being here. My assistant coaches, uh, when I was at UB, we attracted some of the very, very best on a very low budget. And I'm not sure exactly how we did it, but we did. Sean Gibbs, outstanding wrestler, coach, recruiter, and friend. The late Scott Stever, many of you know Scott. Brandon Newell was the UPJ national champion. Tom Tony, of Larry All-American. Josh Koscheck, four-time NCAA All-American, NCAA champ. Iowa All-American Paul Bradley, Frank Beasley, great coach and recruiter, Illinois NCAA champion Matt Lackey, and Jeff Gatchabone, three-time All-American from the University of Michigan, the Cat Man, you're the best. <laughs> you the table over there where the Cat Man is, and there's so many wrestling. Ed Pollard, Jason Worker, John Stubbs, and Josh Gates, I could go on and on. We had great people surrounding the program. Athletes from 17 years at UB, seven years at Pitt, one year at Clary, and one at Castaway Valley. I'm so lucky to be part of their lives. You, the athletes, you did what no others have done before since. You won Division I tournaments, dual meet tournaments, New York State Collegiate Championship multiple times, over 150 dual meet wins. As a first time all American UB history, and Kyle Sermon here, and the greatest UB wrestler. We have had uh, so many great wrestlers, my 17 year coaching career at UB, too many to mention, and some are here tonight. UB wrestling crew right over there. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Boys and Bulls, thank you guys, thank you. I love and respect all you guys forever. Different makers in my life, Clarion University Wrestling. There's one season in particular, and one match that stands out above all, and everybody here knows which one. Uh, we wrestled uh, Oklahoma State at home, 45,000 people packed crowd in 1986, my senior year. We finished 17 0 that year. I think they were ranked third in the country, and they came into the little Clarion Gymnasium, and, and we beat them. Not soundly, we beat them. Uh, came down to my weight class, and Coach Bob here, my favorite uh, warm up speech of all time, he said, Jim, if you don't tech follow your guy, we're going to lose. <laughs> He said, our heavyweight is going to get paid. He's going to get paid fast. <laughs> no, no pressure at all. Well, now, too, unfortunately, after I got taken down twice in a row, I wound up getting on top and turning the guy, and we won the match. Ironically, the heavyweight came off the, the mat and got in at 17 seconds. <laughs> and he looked at me, and he this is exactly what happened. He said, thanks, Jim. No, he even saw me wrestle. <laughs> so he was cheering so loud. It was awesome. <laughs> Thank you, you know, my Clarion teammates. I had so many great memories and friends. Two of them are here today. Co-captains, Ken Ellis, Ken Hasser, two of the very best. Great friends, tremendous, you know, teammates and captains. Love you guys. My friend Emesis. Look that up if you don't know what it is. But that's Dave Hickson. Right there. Best official in the country, great wrestler, true friend, and uh, my ultimate nemesis in life. We competed every day, every day, of any time we do anything. And uh, so thank you, appreciate you being here. Randy Stottlemyre, rest in peace, great friend and mentor from the University of Pittsburgh. When you talk about Pitt, all roads really lead back to Randy Stottlemyre. Alice Conti, right here in front. You can't say Western New York wrestling without saying the name Alex Conti. Long, long time friend, Hall of Fame coach, next year. Tremendous supporter. Thank you very much. Three and three, friends and family. Jake, Sam, Grace, my two grandchildren, Cammie and Reagan. They couldn't be here today, but they're here. They're, they're here, you know, in my heart. They're my pride and joy. There's this little stretch of road um, near Centralia, New York. Some people call it Stockton, South Stockton, whatever. It's a little farming community about one mile away. It spawned some of the greatest wrestling people I've ever known, the lifelong supporters and friends. Cousin and Steve Benow, right there. He embellished a little bit, made me look good. Thank you, Steve. Hall of Fame coach, educator, and true friend. Terry Norris, outstanding coach, wrestler, businessman, human being, best friend. 
Jonathan Pennell, a Hall of Famer uh, from Casanova Valley, successful entrepreneur, Robin Pennell, future Hall of Famer, first New York State wrestling champion from our high school, Casanova Valley, Marty Nichols, Hall of Fame coach, educator, and uh, big brothers, John and Tom, right here at this table. Successful wrestlers, football players, business men, great husbands, fathers, and now grandfathers. Not bad for a bunch of country boys. All of this became possible because my brother John decided to play sports in an era when my family did not value sports like we do today. Following John's lead, Tom fell in love with sports also, wrestling and football. We can't say Jim Beacon without saying John and Tom Beacon. It catapulted our family into a lifelong wrestling and football legacy. It continues on today. In fact, there's a whole new batch of Beacon coaches, athletes, boys and girls, prime and ready to dominate Western New York sports, and maybe all around the country. Keep an eye out for them, they're going to be great. Thank you to the strongest man that ever lived, my father, the Bud Man, and the greatest mother in England, Cal Barber. She was a mother of nine completely out of control to crazy kids. <laughs> there wasn't a couch, chair, or a piece of furniture safe in our home. We turned the whole house into our personal wrestling room. We'd wrestle until water dripped from the windows and furniture would be snapped in half. We did the same thing everywhere we traveled, nowhere we were safe from the deep end climate. Friends and family. We wrestled everywhere, all the time. I'm truly sorry if I've missed anyone, but the clock is picking its overtime. Interesting fact, all of my heroes in life have worn wrestling shoes with only one exception. He wore sandals, he may have strapped on a pair of wrestling shoes occasionally, perhaps with a death. Lastly, for those who think I helped along the way, I'm honored and thankful that I could be there to support me. For those who feel I fell short, I wish I could have done better, I wish I could have done more. Thank you very much. It's a true honor. Wow. I'll say that again. <laughs> <laughs> the official 
Gene Tracy, Dick Meldrum, all the guys at the table over there for coming. Thank you. Uh, Dave Hickson, I was a great friend, great, great to referee with, a lot of time in second six. There's no time for all those stories, or is this the right place? I have a very good friend here, Dave Savilov. Dave's an avid wrestling fan, and I took the time to come here. He's also my lawyer, but I think he's here just to see if I say something dumb. <laughs> wrestling is a big part of my life and my extended family. You know, you hear a lot about how wrestling is a, a wrestling community, and it's all a big family, and it's all a big thing for me. You meet people all over outside of wrestling events. They see a wrestling shirt or somebody makes a comment about wrestling and you become, you have a new family, instant family member. So they said wrestling is a huge community, one big family. I think we'd all agree with that. What I didn't know until I started refereeing was that referees are certainly part of that family, but we're like the weird uncle that nobody <laughs> likes to sit next to at a family reunion. We're still family, but we're a lot. Wrestling people are very special. I had, if you read my bio, I had a, a couple of friends that uh, encouraged me to uh, wrestle. Uh, there were two friends that persuaded me to wrestle years ago. They used to, I come in from my track practice and they would throw me in the showers or tie me in little knots and convince me to wrestle. And they're still good friends today. I've never thanked them until today. So Doug McKenney, Jim Frank, thank you for getting me involved in wrestling. It's been a great run. I have a lot of fond memories, great friendships. Thank you both. Thank you, Doug. Our next honoree, Mike Prude, is presenter, Brad Henner. Brad? newspaper 
way before uh, results were online. <clears throat> I was also lucky enough to be Mike's boss when I became the athletic director for Jordan Albert in 1997. And I saw up close how much he cared for the athletes and students at Jordan Albert. Each year, Mike would choose a male student athlete to mentor and guide through the school year. I also remember when we started using the online grading system instead of the old bubble forms. Believe it or not, Mike had difficulty with this. <laughs> Mike always had handwritten lists of things he wanted to accomplish each day. And I, and I know this for a fact. When he comes up here and he pulls out a speech, it's handwritten, it's not typed. A few years ago, Jared bought his father a new cell phone to use instead of the original flip phone. Mike had a handwritten list of all his contacts and asked me to load my new phone. <laughs> Mike has now progressed to an iPhone and an Apple Watch. Again, thanks to Jared, I think. But his, uh, his grandchildren probably taught him how to use both of those. Uh, I mentioned Jared a couple times, but Mike also has a son named Brett. Brett was a uh, good wrestler at Jordan Albridge. Mike had retired from coaching wrestling at that point and was not Brett's coach. I remember hosting Jordan Albridge practice at Fort Byron where I was coaching. This was the week before sectionals. I'd never seen anyone take as long to put on and tie his wrestling shoes as Brett took that day. Practice was almost over by the time that Brett was ready. <laughs> After retiring from teaching, Mike has continued to coach and been a volunteer coach for football, wrestling, and lacrosse at Jordan Albert for many years. I could be wrong, but all told, Coach Fruit has been coaching for almost 50 years at Jordan Elbridge. You can read about Coach Fruit's accomplishments in the program, but I wanted to highlight that he also officiated for 28 years and was a member of the Syracuse Wrestling Officials Association. He refereed at the New York State Championships three times, and I remember a story that uh, at a high school dual meet, he might toss the coach for unsportsmanlike conduct from the dual meet. And that particular coach was hosting a league tournament that Saturday and couldn't even coach when this school was hosting the, the tournament. When I retired in 2011, Mike and I started playing golf a couple days a week by walking nine holes early morning in the Millstone Golf Course. At the time, Mike would bring Magnum, his Labrador retriever, to walk along with us. Mike had trained Magnum not to walk on the greens, so the dog would lay down near the green waiting for us to pile out. Mike trained his dogs like he coached, demanding attention to details, but with respect and love. I remember a few times when Mike would make a bad shot, and probably a few times. He would swear and possibly throw his club, but then turn around immediately and apologize to Maggie for his inappropriate behavior. I know that Mike is very proud of his two sons, Fred and Jared, and all the grandchildren. Thank goodness. Both boys and the grandchildren have taken after Mike's wife, Joan, academically. <laughs> Mike has figured out how to use the internet and does enjoy watching the games online. It's now my honor and privilege as we welcome Mike Fruit for induction into the National Wrestling <laughs> Especially John House, 
who hired me and mentored me. John's back there, please stand up. To be recognized. <laughs> the great coaches that assisted me, especially Lonnie Warner. Lonnie was a technician and the very, very best, and I want him to stand up also. and all my wrestlers who I had the honor of coaching and mentoring. My father told me many years ago to surround yourself with great people to reach success. And that's exactly what I did. What impact has the sport of wrestling had on me? I was a participant, a coach, and an official. As a wrestler, you realize that 95% of the time you're in the practice room. The habits you develop directly affect the direction the sport will take you. Work ethic is what separates the good from the great. I have seen so many guys never reach their potential due to not wanting to dig deeper. I also get upset that that lack of total effort hurts his practice partner. Now from a coaching standpoint, you're seeing two that are now not reaching work ethic standards. You're only as good as your practice partner. As I have said many times, wrestling, by my definition, is a street fight with rules. The mentally tough usually win these close encounters. This, this, this developed mental toughness is a trait that will follow you through your lifetime. That takes us to adversity. There isn't a day that goes by that we have to face some form of adversity. Wrestling, through an insane work ethic, combined with a high degree of mental toughness, prepares us to handle anything that comes our way. In our wrestling practice arena, passionately named the pit, we have a big decal on the wall of the Dan Gable, quote, once you have wrestled, everything else in life is easy. When things become out of sync, a well-trained wrestler will usually come out on top. Perseverance, by definition, is to continue steadfastly in spite of difficulties. We all need to understand the ups and downs of our sport, the making weight variable, the rigors of practice, fighting constant aches and pains, and mental preparation for an upcoming meet or tournament. Wrestlers deal well with all forms of difficulty. And maybe more, most importantly, our sport makes you humble. You'll put your foot out on a pedestal to wrestle another in front of many people with only one coming out as a winner. And as we often say, there's always somebody out there better than you. Humility is also a major reason for solid sportsmanship and fair play. So to sum this all up nicely, work ethic, mental toughness, perseverance, and humility are traits that I take with me every day. Another pit wall that decal symbolizes these qualities might make you relate to the movie Gladiator, starring Russell Crowe. It goes as, I am wounded, but I am not slain. I shall lay me down and bleed a while, then I shall rise and fight again. Thank you all, and God bless. Our next honorees is the Swim All Our Volunteer Award, and it's something the board has always thought important that we should recognize those volunteers important to us in this work. There are many volunteers in the background. This year we are proud and pleased to honor the Tracy girls, Judy, Gail, and Laurie. Please come forward.
I've known Bill Hansel for many years. I'm old enough to be his father. And I think of him as a brother. And one of my closest friends. I'm thrilled he's being honored today, and I can be part of the celebration. Bill definitely has had a lifetime of service to wrestling. He was an outstanding wrestler at Canandaigua Academy. He continued wrestling at the University of Buffalo under Hall of Fame coach Ed Michael. And after dealing with some personal issues, he returned to wrestling a decade later at Ithaca College, where he was a Division III All-American under Hall of Fame coach John Murray. I admire Bill for many reasons, and I know others share that admiration. He's hardworking, conscientious, and unselfish. The kids always come first to Bill. His accomplishments are documented in the program, so I won't review all of those. But he coached at Pelmac for one year when the head coach had to be replaced and they reached out to Bill because they knew he would provide the necessary leadership. That contributed to the Scott brothers winning state titles. Most of his coaching career was at Geneva, where he had numerous sectional champs in Bill Payne won a state title. Bill has contributed more than coaching wrestling. He's been a Section 5 wrestling chairman, and you couldn't ask for a better leader. He regularly has committee meetings of league and sectional class chairmen, asks their opinions, and keeps them informed about sectional and state matters. He's a true leader who respects what the majority of our coaches want that's in the best interest of the kids, and he votes accordingly when the state wrestling committee meetings. We talk regularly, and he does the same with many others with opinions and values. I love working with him. Bill has been very active in our Friends of Wrestling League, whether it's helping to provide t-shirts and awards at the sectionals, raising money at the annual golf tournament, helping out at the Hall of Fame banquet, Bill's up front, offering and doing all he can to make it successful. You can count on him to give 100% every time. But there are other parts about Bill that make him a great person beyond his wrestling as a drug and alcohol counselor, he helps a number of people get on the right track. Many don't know that he's been a roofer since his youth. When they drive to Cornell to watch a match, he points out all the roofing jobs that they've placed in. <laughs> he's done many more since then, including mine. Roofing at work has come with a price. He's dealt with life threatening injuries. At one time, he had to pair up to the strong hospital in Rochester after the fall. I didn't know it at the time. My wife and I were there for my daughter's chemo treatment. I saw a helicopter arriving. I remarked how great it was that mercy flights were possible and my donation annually was going to a worthy cause. I learned later that at the very time Bill was being transported on that helicopter. Bill's a fun guy to be around. He made it serious about getting things done. It was a gift, it was a gift of joking and teasing. Based on what I observed when I had, when I had dinner with him and two of his brothers in Vegas, and had a lot of that when he was growing up. I enjoyed watching the back and forth between Bill and our Section 5 Executive Director, Kathy White, with their Cortland and Ithaca rivalry. That is one second. Actually, I expected Bill to call me this morning on the phone. I did get a phone call, and I said, oh, oh this is coming true. And I expected him to say, Hey, I'm too sick. I'm not going to be able to make that celebration. And then pause and say, oh, I'm only joking. That's happened dozens of times. Well, I'll tell you, today is no joke. This is real. And let us now welcome William Hansel for a duck. Frank, those who know Frank, 
He is one of the most admired and respected people I know. It is an honor for me to run for the Ozzy Metro Center. I'd like to congratulate all this year's inductees and special awards winners. I would also like to thank the Upstate New York chapter of the National Wrestling Hall of Fame for your nomination. I'm completely humbled, to say the least. <clears throat> there is not enough time to thank all the people who made this journey possible. I would not be where I am today if it wasn't for the guidance and support of so many. I've been blessed to have so many amazing people in my life. I would like to share a story <clears throat> that some of you have heard before, but I thought it was in, uh, embodies my journey. <clears throat> and kind of pointed out a little bit. <clears throat> I was hoping that Michael would be here today, because the story has a little bit about a head, uh, story about Ed Michael. Um, I was at the uh, University of Buffalo for a cup of coffee. Um, as many of you know, I am in recovery, and it's a big part of my story. We all have our demons and struggles, mine is addiction. My first attempt in college was at the University of Buffalo in 1981, and I was not very successful. I struggled on the mat and in the classroom. I had a very mediocre freshman season heading into the national qualifier. I lost an early match, was in the wrestlebacks. I was wrestling an opponent I had beaten soundly a few weeks before. It was a close match, and it shouldn't have been. I was in a position to win the match. If I took him down, I moved on to the next, in one, I moved on to the next round. If I lost, my season was over. I didn't want to wrestle another two weeks. I wanted to be part of it. I didn't want to, I wanted to be done. And I heard Coach Michael in the corner, and he says, have some pride, have some pride. I made no attempt to win that match. I lost the match, dropped out of school at the end of the semester. My life continued to spiral down, downward for several years until it hit my bottom. Eventually, I found a recovery program and got sober. Uh, <clears throat> as my recovery was moving forward, there was always a burning desire to finish my lesson career on a positive note and put those words, have some pride, to rest. <clears throat> my high school teammate, Bill Condon, encouraged me to get back into wrestling and put me in touch with Ithaca College coach John Murray. I have no idea why Coach Murray took an interest in someone almost eight years removed from any competition, let alone how I was going to help his team, a team that didn't need any help. Somehow I fit in. Uh, I couldn't have asked for a better place to be, and I was part of two uh, Division Three national championship teams. <clears throat> a few thank yous. Uh, I, I'm going to sit down. I got one more little thing here. Coach Michael probably doesn't even recall saying those words, but the impact they had was powerful. This November, God willing, I'll be sober for 36 years. <laughs> I would like to say a few thank yous as, as groups to my coaches, Robin Pranoff at Canandaigua Academy, John Murray at Ithaca College, my teammates from both Canandaigua and Ithaca, and I got a whole team of Ithaca guys over there. I can't thank you guys enough for your support and your friendship. Uh, administrators and committees I've been a part of, Chris Bourne, thanks for your guidance and mentorship. Kathy Hoyt, the Executive Director of Sex and Five Athletics. Marty Sherman and the New York State uh, Wrestling uh, Committee. The Sex and Five Wrestling Officials Association, all the athletic directors I've worked under. Uh, for my coaching staff, and I have a few here. Thanks for picking my head up when things were bad, and sometimes they were, and being an instrumental part of any of the success you had. And my wrestlers, I love you guys. My family. I have six brothers. Uh, at first, I'd like to thank my parents who are no longer with us for all their sacrifice and support. And my six brothers, you don't have a brother like Robert. And anybody who knows Robert knows what he's, he's, he's out there. But um, so I think. Thanks my parents and my six brothers who've been an influence and an inspiration and continue to be a huge part of my life. And in closing, simply to all of you that are part of the journey, thank you.
and thank you for your services and contributions to this Board of Wrestling. I'm glad that the presenters have hit their three minute mark and given me plenty of time to speak about my father. <laughs> According to my grandfather, the mayor's coach, the time limits are just a mere suggestion anyways. <laughs> so now I can add in the three or four stories you would like me to use. I'm joking. <laughs> Today, I have the honor of presenting my father, Michael Howard. While preparing the speech, I came across a quote, going on the whistle is the easiest part of coaching. Growing up, I witnessed this firsthand. I watched my father spend countless hours setting up for wrestling tournaments, organizing uniforms, packing traveling bags, and hand handling the numerous other responsibilities that go along with coaching. I have also seen the struggles he's faced dealing with the notorious Don Murray and those Rockport Golden Eagles, <laughs> the power outages and ventilation shutdowns at Laker Hall, and even conquering prostate cancer a few years back. My father has pressed on and gritted through the adversity. Despite the long hours and challenges, I know my father would not train a single second of coaching for any other profession. This is his life's work. It is his passion and honor to uphold over 50 years of Howard family legacy at Oswego State and in the wrestling community. A legacy that has been solidified through hard work and dedication, but also many connections and friendships made along the way. A standing monument to that legacy is Laker Hall. Within the concrete castle lays the wrestling room. Above the entrance is a sign stating, through these portals past the hardest nosed wrestlers in the East, a mindset established by my grandfather and then continued on by my father. Two amazing coaches that have built the Oswego State Wrestling Program on high expectations and standards that focus around the sport of wrestling but carry over to a student athlete's personal life. As head coach, my father has mentored many young men who went on to become great coaches, leaders, and role models within their communities. My father's dedication and passion is focused on enhancing the sport and bearing, bearing the lives of those around him. To call him coach is an honor. To receive his guidance is a gift. But have these opportunities on a day-to-day -day basis and be able to call him dad is more than any emotion or words I could express. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the head coach of the Oswego State, my father. That's quite an introduction, right? Okay. If uh, Bob had a question. If Lenny didn't use all his time, I'll get some of that. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what I thought. <laughs> Mike, I'm sure preparing uh, that, those remarks uh, were not easy, especially since you had a great father, your grandfather, the emeritus coach, Jim Howard. Hopefully there weren't that many rewrites after he directed you on what he wanted you to say. <laughs> I want to thank the committee for this tremendous honor. Being inducted into a Hall of Fame that includes my father is very special and it means a lot. I am humbled to be included on this list of so many outstanding coaches, wrestlers, officials, and contributors. It's also an honor to stand here besides the other inductees and award winners today. Congratulations to all of you. It is special to be here with former Laker and Oswego State grad, Carl Coney. It is another proud day for Laker wrestling. I want to thank my brothers for setting the bar high. Growing up with a Hall of Fame coach as a father, we had unlimited access to athletic facilities and outstanding coaches. My oldest brother, Jim, become a college hockey player at Oswego State. Not sure how he managed that, but he was uh, uh, pretty successful on the ice. 
That didn't mean, though, that he escaped the nightly matches in the living room. One of my best training partners in high school was my brother Mark. Yes, at one time we were close and late. That brother rivalry brought out the best in me. He would go on to attend NC State and later Oswego, where he put his name on the wall, Brandon Rogers, in the wake of wrestling room as an NCAA All American. Growing up, we were exposed to so many great coaches and wrestlers from across the country. At the family operated Northeastern Takedown and Leg Wrestling Camp. Besides wrestling, we got really good at moving, cleaning, and taking mats together. During this four week summer camp, we, served, we learned some valuable lessons at the hands of these talented coaches. Not all of these sessions were physically enjoyable, but I can tell you. I still use these same lessons as part of our daily practice routines in Laker Hall. After completing my eligibility, I took on the role as an assistant coach, and I loved every minute. After three years, I was handed the reins under a very close watch. And I can tell you, after 35 years at the helm, I am still being watched closely. <laughs> Just last year, after a close to me loss, the next day, I got the call from the Maryland's coach, and he provided a list of things the team needed to work on. The feedback was well received. I can sum up the Laker wrestling program with one word, and that's family. Between my father and I, we have led the program for 62 years. We have created a family culture that exists throughout the entire program. In attendance today, we have individuals who are part of my dad's teams, as well as guys who wrestled for me. To me, this is an example of how deeply connected this Laker wrestling family is. One of the best teams that I had the opportunity to coach is a team from the mid-90s. Many of these guys are here today, as they always are. I appreciate you guys and the rest of our alumni for, our un for their unwavering support. This is one of the many reasons why I believe we have one of the most loyal alumni bases in Division III. The Howard legacy at Oswego goes beyond my father and I and my two brothers. Six other individuals of the family have competed as Lakers or served as coaches. This includes all three of my children. Mike, who obviously wrestled, Britt, who is currently the women's cross coach, and Matt, who served as her assistant. I am proud to say that all three of my kids were selected as team captains of their college programs. It is no doubt that their involvement with Laker the Laker wrestling family helped them develop those leadership skills. If you love wrestling, then obviously you should marry your high school coach's daughter. <laughs> <laughs> my wife, Sue Ann, has been a perfect partner to share this journey with. Believe me, I would not be standing here today without her tremendous support. I have had plenty. I have had plenty of hardworking assistant coaches. Many were former wrestlers of mine, including the last one, who is now the head coach at that school over there in Rochester. <laughs> I think it's in Rockport. <laughs> Congratulations, Troy Seymour. Each of you have put up with me, especially in the heat of the moment, and I appreciate all of you. One insistent that I would like to acknowledge is my father-in-law, Hall of Fame member, Elmer Ackley. Yeah. <laughs> he had a tremendous impact on me, he was a great mentor, not just with wrestling, but with life. My goal has always been to provide the best possible experience for our wrestlers. I am grateful for the relationships that we develop. I want to thank all of you and your families for allowing me to be part of your college experience. You trusted me to develop and challenge you to reach your goals. I know I am being recognized here today 
but this induction is because of all your hard work and commitment. Lastly, I would not have been able to do any of this without the support of my mother. She is our biggest fan, and she would be extremely proud. Thank you all for being here. I am very grateful.
I think his wrestling background was the foundation for that. With the support he's given to so many, with his business success and his involvement in charity work, Red is truly an outstanding American. Let us now welcome Philip Red Fidel. <laughs> Guys, 
a man a week and they're out there racing and working out and trying to lose their weight, work in bed, whatever they had to do. And uh, and then you should get mad at me and you steal my lunch bag. <laughs> but those were those were, were good things. They were really good things. And um, wrestling, uh, I went through, and I'm, I'm talking about wrestling back in the 50s, so there was a bunch of different things. I remember one in MHC tournaments uh, at the schools. There was a regular Section 5 tournaments, and uh, I got into the uh, IMCA tournaments and did okay. But the truth is, is that it really made me ready for the rest of the world. Uh, there's something about being short that makes you work a lot harder and uh, make sure that you don't fail. And uh, that, that has driven my life along with a lot of other things like I, uh, I uh, married my, my high school sweetheart. She gave me seven, seven children. And that was a tremendous break because she was wonderful. My seven kids have joined me in a business that was new to us. And um, one from my group today. And uh, that's part of, of the story for me in terms of moving ahead. And um, just the gentleman before me talk about family, that's what it's all about for me. When you walk into my restaurant, you'll see a picture of my uncle to her in the war. You'll see a nice sign saying that some paraphernalia, which means always family. And it is at the end of the day. And I'm proud of that. And I just got to say that at the end of the day, I'm grateful for my mother and father who taught me the outstanding values that I think are so important, motivating you and into being as successful as you can be. My seven kids who had hung in there with me, I got 18 grandkids, I got 10 great grandkids. If you live long enough, you can do those things. <laughs> <laughs> and being Catholic doesn't help. <laughs> 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 and uh, today at table 23, I got um, most of my family here, my cousins, and uh, they're in the back Why don't you guys stand up and show them where you are? Get up there. Woo! <laughs> okay. He's standing a little close to me, so with that all being said, I want to just finish by saying thank you to the committee for getting me here. Um, and it's just like when I was in the Army. You know, when you're a shortest guy, you're at the end, and that's what it is, I think, right now. Up there. At the end. <laughs> Thank you, congratulations to the other candidates and inductees, and, 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 and I love you, and thank you for this wonderful crowd. God bless you all. Sydney coach 
called this 1963 team the best high school wrestling team he'd ever seen. We were pretty good that year too, so the, the dual meet was pretty competitive. Lonnie Warner versus Carl Foundry. Cody shooting one shot after another. <coughs> Warner countered pretty effectively. End of third period, Warner counters a shot at the buzzer for a narrow victory. That sound right, Lonnie? <laughs> uh, or just draw, just draw. Another section three, 127 pound semifinals, 1965. Dick New versus Carl Koenig. Koenig again, shooting and shooting. I don't know if you know the new boys, but they were great athletes. Dick, who almost won the states a week later, pulls Carl off for a one point win. Mentioning Dick New, I want to extend my condolences to the new family for Donnie's passing earlier this week. Donnie was an Eastern champion at Cornell in 1967, I think. But Carl's match with Dick ended with Carl in on and trying to shell a single. You know Carl's going to make me walk back to Oxford for only bringing up matches that he wants to <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, my point, Carl was and still is the shooter. Carl was and still is the initiator of the action. No matter how big the moment or tough the challenge, and Lonnie and Dick were certainly that, Carl's history is to get things moving. If there's ever any hesitation to accept responsibility for a job on some project Carl is working, Carl's response is, I got it. And then the son of a gun executes, right? I mean, look at this event, right? <laughs> Carl was our team's most valuable wrestler in 1965, not because he won the most, but because he always put the team first and did the things to make the team better that the rest of us either couldn't or didn't want to do. He hasn't changed a bit. Let me leave you with a big picture observation. When I think about the number of kids, many from very humble beginnings, that Carl and the rest of this wrestling community here tonight has sent on to college and large, larger achievements in life through wrestling, I'm filled with deep respect and admiration. And for that, I salute all of you, and I salute that.
comfort zone, challenging ourselves, a sense of pride of obtaining a goal, gratitude for what we have accomplished, and also enduring the hard practices, dehydration, yes, even high dehydration, pressure, those butterflies that we got before each match, teamwork, and the work, work ethic developed. When I first got to Oswego and I put on my singlet and it had the Oswego across my chest, I thought I could conquer the world. But I guess some other people had some different choices. <laughs> One of the main goals and missions, and folks, you can sit down. I thank you very much. You are awesome. <laughs> One of the main goals or missions of the Upstate New York chapter of the National Wrestling Hall of Fame is to recognize excellence in wrestling. The honorees today and in the past has certainly exemplified this excellence. Today in the audience, we have three Division three national champs, Mike Vasily, Rick Armstrong, and Tom Hall. That's excellence, folks. In addition, in this audience, we have Matt Shorsinski, who has officiated so many Division I national championships that I don't have enough fingers to count on. And he has also done countless final bouts at the uh, national championships. As a matter of fact, one of my friends uh, just said to me, geez, uh, I don't know him, but I've seen him on TV a lot. <laughs> we also have excellence in the area of athletic administration with folks like folks like Marty Sherman, the director of wrestling in New York State, and my friend Ben Nelson, who is the director of athletics in Section 4 and at Camp Dudley. Through this chapter, we have done much to recognize and cultivate a culture of excellence. Furthermore, it's important to note that the chapter acknowledges the fact that every wrestler who ever wrestles is an integral part of that excellence. And another paramount objective of the chapter is to preserve the rich and colorful heritage of wrestling that we have in New York State. We do this by acknowledging the legacy each year of our inductees and award winners and at the state championships, the uh, chapter always has an exhibit that tries to provide an insight into the history of our sport. This year, at our annual golf social luncheon uh, that took place at Millstone in Elbridge, uh, I took a picture of Coach Jim Howard, who was my coach. And in that picture, there was Coach Howard, Orlando Turco, and Leo Jones. And folks, Coach Howard is over 90, Orlando Turco is over 90, and Leo is 86 years old. I look at that picture and I marvel at the number of years that they have been a part of the wrestling history of the upstate area. I realize how essential it is that we continue to honor all the years of service that these people have given to our sport. Their legacy and those who have been honored by our chapter needs to be shared, recognized, and honored. These careers, like those, should never be forgotten. The chapter expresses our gratitude to all wrestling people in what area, in whatever area that they have excelled in. Thank you, folks. We remember back in wrestling history, and we talk about wrestling history. And we ask questions like, who was the first state champion from Section 3? Kirk Cuffinger from Auburn. Who was the second state champion for Section 3? Uh, I had to ask that question because my brother was the second one. <laughs> <laughs> he's bigger, he's stronger, and um, I, I, I have to ask that. I had to ask that question. How much history do you think that we have discussed in the last two or three days that we've been here? Perhaps a few facts will be embellished 
but that will last forever. Lastly, the chapter desires to inspire future generations to wrestle, boy or girl, certainly all of our honorees today and past have inspired students and adults in wrestling. We all understand and appreciate the life lessons it teaches. And hopefully by recognizing excellence and preserving the history of our sport, we will inspire more student athletes to wrestle. I leave you with a few things to think about. Be grateful for everything you have. Forgive each other. Work hard and give it your best. If you get knocked down in life, get up each time. Worry not what others think of you. Know when to move on. Find happiness in little things. Have fun and be happy. Thank you very much.
gotta get the dog. He was like, they need another one for the road.